Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to simulate a simple 2D triplane airfoil um, with an unstructured grid. Um, it, 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 we are using a coarse mesh, and this could be a good starting point for any more detailed um, simulations that you may want to run. Um, so this is uh, uh, based heavily on my earlier biplane simulation. Um, and here I will show you how easy it is to add another, um, uh, to just modify the meshing script written in GMesh to add another surface. And uh, you can make this an arbitrary, arbitrarily n-plane, a multi-plane, if you wanted to. Um, and it, it, wouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, so, as usual, the case contains all the open foam simulation files, configuration, boundary conditions, initial conditions, etc. Clean, this clean script is for your convenience, just to start over after you've already run a simulation. It deletes out all the generated files. Mesh is the, are the mesh scripts written in GMesh that generates the airfoil uh, mesh. Uh, README just goes over some basic instructions, basically what I'm covering now. And this run script is uh, an all-in-one, you know, just run this script and, and you, the whole simulation will be run for you. So let's take a look at the parameters involved. So here um, I have just have a file um, of all the parameters available. Um, in this particular, so this is this was as I said before, based on the bi my earlier biplane simulation, and some of these variables are not used because I just wanted to do a simple, you know, uh, simple simulation. So I kind of took out the individual angle of attack, but I left in the stagger and gap, and uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, this is probably the key one that you you can play around with very easily. Um, and let's take a look at the actual script. So that parameters uh, file is just included with this command. Uh, it you know it just includes all the variables I've defined in line, as if it were here in the script. It's just uh, cleaner to organize it. And um, to add another foil, all all I did was repeat this instantiation of single bend airfoil, this custom routine that I've written here. It's included in this file here. And um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I also changed the, I also had to increase the number of surfaces included to capture the third surface in here too. Um, and it would take a little bit more work, but you could parameterize this on the number of surfaces. So just like enter a parameter like five surfaces, and you could you can make a uh, how would you say quant quintuple plane or something, a uh, the f a five five uh, five surface airfoil um, using some kind of for loop. Uh, uh, yeah, so that that's definitely possible if you wanted to do that. All right, so let's take just a quick look at the mesh. Uh, it's a simple wind tunnel here. We got the inlet, the outlet, the uh, tunnel walls, and then of course the airfoil. Um, this is at 20 degrees angle of attack. It's just a simple airfoil with uh, 0.5 cord length stagger, uh, I mean gap in between, and zero stagger, which means they're all stacked directly on top of each other. Nothing, you know, ahead of the other when it's at zero angle attack. So um, I, I achieved this, tw this 20 degrees angle of attack based on that parameter I showed you just just by rotating these uh, these lines. There's a GMesh command called rotate that can that allows you to do that. So let's just take a quick look at the mesh. You can see it's all unstructured, rather coarse. Um, yeah, that's pretty simple. All right, um, so that's pretty much it. After this, you can just 
say run and it'll do the meshing uh, the mesh conversion uh, and running the simulation and everything for you um, and if you want to learn how this is all done just simply take a look at the mesh and you'll see every step annotated with each command all right so let's take a look at some results that I've run already um, at 20 degrees angle of attack you can see like a lot of separation here um, the lift coefficient at this angle is uh, like 3.1 or so which is pretty high um, and I, I suspect it's even higher because uh, as we saw in the NACA 0012 video um, open foam tends to greatly underestimate the lift coefficient at, at with with coarse grids and greatly overestimate the drag so yeah you, you definitely want to do finer grids um, maybe even move on to structured grids uh, and um, take take the results with a grain of salt um, always validate and compare to experimental results whenever possible so anyways yeah let's uh, but um, it might be good for uh, these sorts of course simulations might be good for just um, getting ballpark estimates or comparing different configurations um, you know with with low sort of fidelity uh, and just uh, finding like huge differences between things and but uh, if you want accurate values, you definitely want to take a different approach or use a much finer grid. Uh, we can take a look at the pressure field. Oops, that colored the lines. Uh, let's see. That's pressure. Okay. So you can see we have a huge pressure, high pressure on the bottom. It gets less and less with the upper uh, surfaces, and it seems like there's a lower pressure. Uh, on the topmost surface and decreases as you go down. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any suggestions on more ideas, any, anything you want to see simulated in particular, or any comments, uh, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching.